Welcome to Shawnee Union, and this week we're going to talk about my favorite vintage Nikon lenses. I'm going to pick five of them. The reason I got into vintage Nikon lenses was when I started doing this channel, I was doing a lot of video, and I really liked the way the Nikon lenses looked. They gave a classic look, and then they were just really durable. So um, I liked them more than Canon and other brands, and I just stuck to having a bunch of Nikon glass around. Um, a lot of the the lenses you're going to see in this video were recommended by naturphotograph.com. If you're looking to get into vintage Nikon lenses, I would definitely check out that website. He has some great reviews, some great recommendations, and everything that he recommended for me was like spot on. So um, let's get into the lenses I like and then why I like them. The first lens we're going to talk about, my favorite lens, is the Nikon 50mm f1.8. This is an E-series lens. A lot of people think that the E-series ones are a little bit cheaper and not made as well, but I really like this one because of its size. It's actually a pancake 50 millimeter lens, and this lens just lives on my Nikon FM when I'm shooting pictures on there. So because it's so small and so compact, it makes it just easier to shoot and funner to shoot for me. So when I'm around with that camera, I'm always using this pancake lens. It takes really amazing images and is fun and easy to shoot with. So um, because of its size and portability, it's my favorite Nikon lens. My next favorite lens is the 28mm 2.8, and there's two main reasons. One, it's probably the sharpest lens I own, so even compared to the, Can the uh, Leica Summicron DR, I think this one's a little bit sharper, just insanely sharp, and that comes in really handy for video and photography. Second, it has a really close focusing distance, so when I need to do macro stuff and stuff under one foot, this is the camera, this is the lens I bring out, so um, it really works well for my channel when I'm shooting a lot of cameras and gears and I need to get close to stuff. Um, I don't have to have a dedicated macro lens and I can just put this on and shoot. When you're using a crop sensor camera, it comes out, it, it actually um, is pretty close to normal, so 45 millimeters um, with a crop. So a very useful lens and extremely sharp, so second favorite. My third favorite Nikon lens was one that I had but don't own anymore and it's the 105mm f2.5 AIS. This is a very famous lens and is possibly one of Nikon's greatest lenses. This was used by Steve McCurry to shoot the Afghan girl um, in Afghanistan, a picture that's probably one of the most famous pictures um, of our era, of our era, published in National Geographic, put him on the map, made him extremely famous, and it's just a really um, amazing picture. It's a portrait lens at 105 millimeters. Um, the reason I don't have it anymore is the focus on mine was always tight and never loosened up. And also I wasn't taking a lot of portraits, so I didn't really need it anymore. But um, easily one of Nikon's sharpest lenses and one of their best lenses of all time. And if you're gonna shoot portrait photography on film or a full frame camera, I would pick that up in a heartbeat. You can find it for under $200 and at, at that price, it's an amazing steal. So we're gonna go from 105 to 180. And this is one I was using for concert photography and concert videos. It is the um, Nicker Q Auto um, 135 f2.8, a really cool lens um, for this kind of focal length, having a 2.8 is really handy. And I was able to shoot in a lot of dark places at like ISO 800, so extremely handy for those type of situations. It's a little bit of a bulkier lens, but I think for telephotos it's not too bad. Um, I used it in video to get closer to my subjects or when I was farther away, and it came in really handy. I actually used it more than the 105, and that's the reason I got rid of the 105, but I thought it was just about as sharp and, um, and really easy to use as well. So the 135 2.8, um, extremely good for um, if you're going to do sports or you're going to do concert photography. I would highly recommend it as well. And lastly, a lens that I've recently purchased, a very specific lens, but a very good lens, is the PC 35mm 2.8. This is perspective control, which allows you to shift up and down. Um, I got this for $160, and that's really cheap for a perspective control lens, so um, the ability to shift when you're doing architectural photography or any type of photography is really handy, and at $160, you really can't beat it. I think it's extremely um, sharp, and it's pretty light too, so it's not too um, burdensome to put on your camera and go around with. It is a little bit clunky how to use, but I don't know how you're going to use a shift lens in a really elegant way. Um, so highly recommend this guy if you're going to take architectural photography. It is very specific, but it's very good as well. 
The really cool thing about the lenses I talk about today is they're not too expensive. I got them all for under $200 and I got them through KEH Adorama and then use Photo Pro. So they are out there and they're widely available too since Nikon made so many lenses over a long period of time. Are there any lenses you think I missed on or any lenses you'd like to, um, you think I should try in the Nikon family series? Um, I haven't tried everything so these are just among, among the ones um, I've really wanted and, and have gotten a hold of. Um, other than that, I hope you guys enjoy that video. I will see you guys again next week. Oh my god. I gotta do the, the ringer.